Last summer, a capacity crowd of 35,000 people witnessed the inaugural Iowa Corn 250 IndyCar race. And thanks to a live broadcast on ABC television, the eyes of the racing world focused on Newton, Iowa. And the inaugural running here at Iowa Speedway is green. Green, green, green. The Iowa Speedway's progressive banking system allowed drivers to run their machines wide open the entire race. And top drivers like Elio Castroneves, Tony Kanaan, and 2007 Indy 500 winner Dario Franchini roared around the track at speeds in excess of 180 miles per hour. While IRL is new to Iowa, the fuel powering the 650 horsepower cars has grown here for centuries. That's because the 2007 IndyCar series was the first in auto racing to power its vehicles with 100% ethanol. In Brazil, we've been running, you know, the ethanol uh, for years, for 25 years. So I would say this is a better concept. It's cheaper, doesn't harm your engine, doesn't, it is better for the environment. I mean, uh, it's a win-win situation. Despite ethanol's ability to make cars go fast, the industry's evolution from value-added commodity to preeminent alternative fuel has taken some time. U.S. ethanol production grew slowly in the 1980s and 90s. But at the dawn of the new millennium, America entered the age of renewable fuels. Corn is the predominant feedstock of U.S. ethanol, and the Agriculture Department estimates about 25% of last year's crop was used to produce the high-octane fuel. Let us build on the work we've done and reduce gasoline usage in the United States by 20% in the next 10 years. Much of ethanol's success is attributable to policy changes in Washington, like the 2005 Energy Bill, which created a Renewable Fuel Standard, or RFS. The RFS established a national minimum usage requirement of 4 billion gallons in 2006 and increased the mandate to 7.5 billion gallons in 2012. Now, just two years after the original RFS became law, proponents believe it wasn't ambitious enough, and Congress recently passed a measure increasing the production mandate to 36 billion gallons by 2022. Demand for ethanol also has grown thanks to aggressive marketing. If ethanol gives top drivers all the power and performance they expect, it'll work for you too. The Ethanol Promotion and Information Council, or EPIC, is a nonprofit alliance of industry leaders who work on increasing demand for ethanol through targeted marketing. According to EPIC, Ethanol currently is blended into almost 50% of America's fuel supply, replacing about 600,000 barrels of oil every day. In 2007, America's 110 biorefineries produced 6.5 billion gallons of ethanol. 75 more facilities are either under construction or expanding to bring annual production to nearly 8 billion gallons. And while ethanol is growing fast, it's also going fast. And there's no better example of that than the 17 car, sponsored by ethanol and driven last year by Jeff Simmons. You know, we've seen a lot of, a lot of great things in the car this year with our switch to 100% fuel grade ethanol and, and more torque uh, and broader power band and, and uh, we're getting better mileage than we were last year as well. So, you know, all those things are, are great and uh, the crews and the fans are breathing easier too because it's cleaner burning. While the 17 car is probably the most eye-catching form of ethanol marketing, promotion of alternative fuels isn't limited to four wheels. To encourage the use and development of renewable energy, the Iowa Farm Bureau commissioned Orange County choppers to build America's first custom bike capable of running on 85% ethanol. And the stars of American Chopper, the Tuttles, unveiled their flex fuel creation at the Iowa Corn 250. Green, huh? <laughs> uh, you know, this is a cool project, and the best part is it's the first bike that we've ever built uh, that runs on E85 ethanol. The one-of-a-kind machine was raffled last summer with gross proceeds supporting renewable power initiatives. And the rapid growth of alternative energy is fueling optimism in farm country. The ethanol boom in the state has been good for 
couple of reasons. I think it's been a good opportunity for young people to come get started in farming because there's an opportunity for profit. If there's profit in farming, young people will come back. By selling their corn to the local ethanol plant and feeding dried distillers grains to their livestock, the Alligers capitalize on the entire production cycle. And officials claim livestock plays a pivotal role in the future of ethanol. The livestock industry is very important for the growth and the overall health of the renewable fuels industry because they use the co-product that is created out of the energy production. Despite yielding a byproduct containing 80% of its original nutritional value for livestock, pure ethanol is the highest performing fuel on the market with an octane rating of 113. And that was enough to power Dario Franchitti to victory lane in last year's Indianapolis 500 and the Iowa Corn Indy 250. I've got nothing but positive things to say about ethanol. Um, in fact, I think we've gained a little bit of horsepower with it, so uh, it's, I think it's great, and you've got to applaud the IndyCar series for, uh, for taking the lead on that, and the guys from ethanol for supporting the series. So uh, positive all the way around. For Market to Market, I'm John Nichols.